Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws and welcome to the 13th and final video in this simple game programming in monkey tutorial series. In this video we're going to be finishing off our game by adding sound and music. So we're going to have a music, some kind of music playing in our menu and then a different song playing during the game. And so that's what we're going to start out with and for this for this music I just went ahead and went to Kevin McLeod's site, which is incompetech.com. Uh, links in the description box below. You should definitely check it out. Um, and so I just, yeah, I just grabbed the first two I saw, and they actually fit pretty well. So if you notice, if you go to the data folder, if you've extracted it at all, you'll notice we have the two image or the two song files here, and then we got some sound files. So I've got a, some pain and then lava death sounds that I created, and if you, also, if you didn't notice, I got a little readme file that has all the information. Basically, it's telling you that everything I've created here, everything I've actually created, so besides these songs, everything else, you can use in any game or any project you want. You can you can change these players up or do whatever. You can claim that you made this stuff. I don't care. And so, but, and then just with the exception of these two files, these music files, um, they are owned by Kevin McLeod and he, he releases them under the Creative Commons license uh, with attribution so you have to attribute it to him if you're gonna use this in any, any publicly available project so just keep that in mind you should definitely check out his site I've provided a link to it in this file as well so you can check out his stuff okay so getting that legal stuff out of the way let's go back to our code and we're gonna start with the music it's the easiest so in our on create we're going to just start out playing the disco song because it's perfect for a, mu a menu I'm telling you it's wonderful and you notice I went with the aug format because I'm doing this in uh, chrome and chrome supports aug and not, but not all targets support aug so you might need to pick some different files you can go onto a site and download these again in mp3 if these songs aren't working, or you can download different songs, or you can use your own songs, whatever you want to do. And now, so that's just going to start out our game playing this music. So we, when we go, let's say we go to our, our on state, when we enter the game, so when they hit enter from the menu, we're going to play the, our game music. In this case, I picked Mining by Moonlight, which is again a perfect fit I was, I was pretty ecstatic about that and now let's say let's go back down here into the state death and what we're going to do is if they hit escape to go back to the menu we're going to go back to playing the original uh, menu music which is disco con tutti uh, og. and you notice you don't have to like stop and then play you can just say play music and if it's a different file it's going to play it's going to start that file over and it's going to you know, stop the old music, play the new music. So that's it for the music. And if I wish I knew how to feed sound through here, you might be able to hear this because it's kind of loud. But here we go. Boom. And then when it plays, it's different music. It's very appropriate, I'm telling you. Alright, so that's it for the music. For the sounds, how I want to set this up is just. I have two different sounds that are pain sounds for when they hit the spikes. I'm going to set it up so whenever someone hits a spike it plays a random sound or it plays one of the pain sounds randomly. So how I'll do that, and it's going to do the same thing for my lava sounds. They're going to, it's going to play one at random. So I'm going to create sound arrays for each type of sound. So one for my pain sounds and then one for my lava sounds. Oops. And then to initialize these, I'm just going to the on create. And before we start playing music, we're going to load some music. So our pain sounds is going to be assigned to, and then just within brackets, we're going to load pain sound one dot wave, and then separate by a comma pain sound, or I guess pain zero, and then pain one dot wave. And close the bracket. So that's going to initialize this with an array, um, with a sound array of size two. So I'm 
uploading two sounds. So those are these are each going to return a sound object. So it's going to be a a two an array of size two of sound objects. And then we're going to do the same thing with the lava sounds. I'm going to load sound lava. What did I call it? Lava death dot wave. Let's double check. Yeah, lava death zero dot wave and we're gonna load another sound lava death one dot wave and now we want to play these sounds when they die so let's go down into our uh, update player method here and you notice here we check if it's this or this then just kill them but we don't want to do, we're actually going to check we need to check if it's the top then we're going to um, play one sound and if it's the bottom we'll play the other so you can either split these up or what I'm going to do I'm just going to so we're not duplicating all this code I'm just going to stick it out separately I don't know why but I'm going to do it so if it's this then we're going to create a new method here and we're going to call it play random sound and this is going to be when they hit the spikes, I believe. Yep, this is when they hit the spikes. So we're going to call the pain sounds. So this, this play random sounds method is just going to take an array of sounds and then play one at random. And then if it's this other one, if they go below the screen, like so, then we're going to play a random lava sound. And then she's going to go through and check and then kill them off. So now let's create our play random sound method. Make sure it's right here within the main class. So play random sound and it's going to bring in a sound array and it's going to pick a sound at random using the random function. So it's going to be from 0 to sounds.length so anywhere from 0 to sounds.length but not including that sounds.length and then it's going to cast it as an integer, which is exactly what we want. And then we're going to call the play sound function, comes mojo, and we're just going to play that random sound using the random index we get. So let's run this. And if you're following along, you'll notice that the sounds are working, but if two sounds happen to happen at the same time, if two people die at the same time, the sounds get kind of cut off, so it's not so great. So how we're going to take care of that issue is we're going to play these sounds on different channels. So going back to the top of our main class, our Fallen Game class, create a new field called Max Channels. And it's just pretty much going to say that this is the maximum number of channels you can loop through to play our sounds. And I found that 8 is the safest for most platforms. Uh, there's not all platforms support more than 8 channels. And then we have another field that's just set to the current channel. So now when we play our sounds, we're going to play on the current channel then once we're done once we've played it we're going to increase that cur channel value by one so the next time we play sound it's going to play on a different channel so if two people die at the same time or pretty close together one sounds going to play on one channel and the other sounds going to play on the next channel and then they're just going to mix together so it's going to sound nice so what we'll do is we'll just increase the current channel by one and then we're going to do a quick check make sure our current channel isn't greater than the max channels otherwise we're going to set current channel back to zero. It's going to start all over again so now when you run it well I need to add more players than just one so let's kill this guy oh no and let's create some more players and now you're going to notice you're going to hear all the sounds play if you're playing along all right, so now, guess what? Our game is finished. And so if this is the first time you've created a game from start to finish, well, congratulations. 
Um, and I challenge you all to, you know, you can actually, you know, games are actually never really finished. So you can, there's a lot of stuff you can actually do to this game if you want. Um, I've thought about, you know, adding power ups that players can collect that spawn randomly. So as they're going, you know, they can gain increased running speed, or they can gain the ability to fly or jump or float, or they can kill the other players if they touch them. I don't know. It could, you know, it could be really fun. So yeah, I challenged you to play with this and make fun things or just, you know, make a completely different game. But anyway, thanks for watching this series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned. And I didn't go too fast, but uh, so join me in the next series if I ever make one. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.